Hello, this is Brian Rowe from Mythic MTG Tech doing a informal question and answer. I've had two questions come in recently that I wanted to address. Uh, one of them was in response to what's going on currently with regards to Moto, and the other one is regarding online trading. Uh, so let's jump into the Moto one. As everybody here probably knows, Brian Kibler, one of the darling childs of magic, uh, kind of exploded in a tirade last week when a championship event, uh, these are called Mox events online, uh, went sour and he was in contention, actually had top eight locked with the best record in the tournament. And their wizard's idea to compensate this is when the whole tournament crashed is to move this tournament over to a week later and give people online digital uh, credit for their inconvenience. Now, to Brian Kibler, who plays in professional events, flies around the world to play, who had a very good shot at that top spot, uh, that just doesn't work. I mean, if you've already spent $500 on plane tickets to fly to DC to play in a Grand Prix, a professional level event the next week, uh, the reschedule option is just sad. Now, if this has been the first time this happened on Magic Online, uh, we're also known as Moto, then I can see where you don't really have a justification of exploding. But apparently this is the fourth time that a major championship event like this with their moxes has crashed. And I myself used to play a pretty good amount of Magic Online back in the Kamigawa era. I was in law school at the time and things were, I just didn't have people to play with at the time. So I liked having that community. I liked being able to deck test with some amazing players, but the interface at the time was just terrible. And there were definitely problems where you would get dropped from events or glitched out of events. And when compared with paper magic, the experience is just much worse. So I think what Kibler has really done here, although his rant might've been a little over the top, it's not the way I would have handled it. He has brought light to what has really been a problem for magic online for at least the last five, six years. And it sounds like since its inception. Wizards has canceled all of their big events and is working with their dev team to fix this as soon as possible. And I'm really answering this question right now because I hope Wizards is listening and they look at some other things on where Magic Online is going and how they can really make that experience of Magic Online as good as the experience that we all love shuffle and paper cards. Now there's five things that I think wizards should really look at right now. It's a great opportunity for them to use this to build a better tool for us to play online. Number one is the usability of the client. Lots of people lose games to miss clicks or slightly confusing clicks. They need to hire a UX engineer, somebody from an information school, somebody who does human computer interactions that will do an evaluation outside of the wizard's team and do it iteratively over the next six months to a year. Now, hopefully they did this with the beta, but it clearly failed with their beta client. So that individuals who are really new or who play less than 200 games they can bring down that click error rate to where you lose off of a in off of the interface not working the way that you hoped it would. I and mean, that that is a huge key and a huge barrier to get new players in. Number two, they really need to look at options for people to do casual testing on there. I know a lot of people who use cockatrice currently to test new decks, especially in the standard environment instead. Uh, some individuals are even spinning up cockatrice servers on their own and just keeping them private so that Wizards doesn't find out about them. But every one of those players that I know would be happy to move to Moto and do their testing on Moto if they had an inexpensive way to play casual games on Moto. If they didn't have to spend $500 or $1,000 to build the six or seven decks that are top in standard and then test against each of those. If there was a $10 a month subscription fee that gave you access to all the cards in standard and then maybe 15 for access to all of the cards back through vintage merely for the opportunity to do testing there would be thousands, if not tens or hundreds of thousands of players that would move from this dark area of cockatrice, which actually doesn't really work that well, 
onto Modo to do their testing. So look at that subscription option. You can divide it to where if you're playing in the rated events, if you're playing in the events with prizes, you must have digital copies of the card. But for play testing, pay that 10 or that $15 a month and you will have people locked in forever. I have no idea where I am in the numbers at this point, but the next one that really needs to be looked at is the marketplace in Magic Online. It is miserable to do trades. I hate the way that bots are set up. I, I remember playing EQ back in the day, and when they moved from everybody sitting in a little cave in a tunnel, shouting things across the zone, to having an online marketplace where you could search and you could see the lowest price and you could go to that person's character and buy directly when they were offline, that was beautiful. And that was five, six years ago. I mean, Wizards is behind the curve when it comes to online marketplaces for digital objects. You could make the trade experience much, much better and the transaction experience much, much better by putting in a digital marketplace. Go look at EQ from several years ago, and I'm sure there are better examples out there. I'm just not a hardcore video gamer anymore. I mean, I, I cut my teeth on uh, EQ and WoW. That's where I learned to set up like a Linux network and do packet sniffing sniffing and learn the basics of computer science and that's what's got me into the field but i'm sure that there are games out there with much better market places and wizards could learn from those marketplaces the next thing is there needs to be a more clear interesting reward system that allows people to show what they're doing really cool way to show off achievements to kind of share those with the community i know that when i played wow I loved being in a guild, getting some rewards for what I had done, maybe defeating people with an all commons deck when they're playing a standard deck or other things like that. And, and it had kind of that game theory response fun. Right now, Magic Online is really limited to copying the experience of playing in physical cards. There's no campaign mode. There is no uh, real achievement fun mode. There's a lot of casual gamers that would love to just dink around in it the way that they do in Duels of the Planeswalkers. And I would love to see that become more of an option in Magic Online. Uh, the last thing here I'm definitely re-emphasizing is the stability and recording of events. If you're doing events, you need to record all of the pools, all of the standings, everything, so that if something comes down, you can spin this up on an alternative server and have everybody back online in 30 minutes. Worst case scenario, if you can't do that, you can have the event back up in a few hours. The recording software is out there. The database management is out there, and it's been there for several years. If you're going to be a game A player who's putting things out there on Twitch and has this giant following, you don't want these crashes happening. And that's, that's the end thing of where the professionalism really has got to jump in. Now... I don't care to rant, and I'm sorry I was ranting at Wizards a little bit there because I love magic and I really want Moto to be a really good product. I'm going to end with something that I've been doing a little bit more of. Um, I am a hardcore trader. I'm one of those types of traders uh, that loves to make trades, to make transactions, making somebody happy, making that deal work. That is so much fun. Now, I try to value trade. I try to trade up into things that I really want. I try to build decks, but I'm not that set collector, and I'm not that hardcore must-finish-everything person or must-foil something out. But I had posted on my YouTube channel on the main page my want list of what I'm looking for, and I've done a few small online trades, but I had this amazing opportunity to come up this last week where somebody noticed that I was looking for a foil cradle. Uh, somebody from outside of the US, and it looks like we're gonna be doing a trade here. The cradle is in the mail, and it, it hurts me a little bit because I passed up a cradle for this card straight across right before the new legend rule. And now I'm trading all of these for a cradle. I mean, we're looking at an extra C note just off of the fetch lands that I've had to add up here and actually we're more like 150 or so on the fetches but uh, this is my first really big online trade I'm curious to see how it goes when the package comes in I'm gonna do an opening and show it off here um, I like to keep this channel more towards news and events but I think I'm gonna post my first kind of a trade binder video and see what kind of response it gets at least 80 90 percent of the content on here is still gonna be news deck text EDH type stuff but with the move over to Google Plus 
and comments, those type of things. I'm going to try to do a little more of the casual fun stuff here, maybe even some more online trading. If you've got any tips for online trading, please definitely give them to me. Uh, I'm looking for a good video that I can point out that really shows people how to properly pack things when shipping, that type of stuff. So leave them in the comments. Finally, if you have any questions for me, I will answer all the MTG related questions that are posted in this post uh, within a week. And that's something I've never done in the past, but I'm making that commitment that I, I will do research. I'll come up with some quick answers. If it's a longer video thing, my answer may be, I'll do a video on that later. That's going to take a few hours of research. But if you want to know something shorter, you got any questions for me about magic in general, strategy, that type of stuff, I'm more than happy to do it. And I'll get back to all of the comments that are posted in this thread within one week. We'll see how that goes. Thank you guys so much. Please, if you've got ideas on how Wizards can make Magic Online better, now is the time to speak up. Post them, blog them, put them up on Twitter, write a letter and send it to Wizards. Wizards needs to hear what those ideas are because they are seriously looking at improving that product right now, and now is the time to let them know. Thanks.